share one experience, one story that I've had working on the Prescription Drug Affordability Boards, which are the government drug affordability reviews happening in various states around the United States. In this case, I'm going to talk about Colorado, which is the first state that has successfully gone through all five of their drug reviews. And with that, I was on, I am on one of the drugs that was under review. And so I was speaking behalf of a patient, but also as a leader of a patient organization where we did some surveys, some discussions with patients to understand if this drug was affordable or unaffordable to them and why. In, in my case and in the large majority of cases for people on this biologic, it is completely affordable for us mainly because of the copay assistance program, which is something that is available if you are not on a state plan like a Medicare or a Medicaid. And in that case, it gets a little tricky. And so in this case, they, the state level in these PDEBs cannot review Medicare. So those patients, those are situations to collect to then talk about that affordability to CMS, to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So I was a little disappointed because the testimony that we gave and I was the only patient that spoke, was not really listened to in respect in the respect that the board members felt that if we took the copay assistance program away, then it wouldn't be affordable. And if that ever happened, if the manufacturer decided just to cancel it, well, that's a reason to rule this unaffordable. There were some other situations situations, other things that they looked at. But what they didn't look at is the patient data, because it was collected by, I believe, five patients, and they didn't feel like that was enough. However, they did include it in the survey for another drug that only had three patients in it. But the difference in that survey and the analysis, and I think why they left it out is because I and others who are patient research partners took the data before the review and we realized that the analysis was a little bit biased to the side of the insurance company. And we also learned that the person who did the analysis is an insurance company analyst. So that might be why, even though we tried to fill in the blanks as patients and say, wait a minute, this is actually what these patients likely meant. They didn't listen and they still ruled it unaffordable. So I want to make sure that my voice, your voice, anyone who has both affordability and unaffordability, all of us need to be heard. And the why, the context of why that something is a challenge is important to count. The other part of that that I would just like to say is I also mentioned that in the beginning of the year, I was given a bill for $2,700 by the insurance company, even though I had the copay assistance and I had to call for three months and spend several hours on the phone working with the insurance company to make sure they applied my copay assistance program. I knew to call back. Many patients would look at a bill for three months and just give up and think, well, I can't afford this drug. That doesn't mean the drug is unaffordable. That means the insurance company was really hoping that I wouldn't follow through and I would just give up. <laughs>